Okay, well, welcome to the uh, wrap-up session for problem three. And uh, got to remind everyone that there are 16 days left until our glorious art show. Is that right? <laughs> you look at the <laughs> right? 16 days left, and, and, and it'll be, that's a power of two, so it must be significant. And, uh, uh, and uh, we'll have some um, information about how to get, how to do rudimentary gray level typesetting. Uh, anyway, we can, we'll supply uh, sample f uh, format so that you don't have to deal with all the bit level hassles uh, of, of some of these machines that a few of us already know how to, how to poke into a little bit. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, so uh, can I ask how many people have actually uh, actually uh, plan to use that digitizing equipment that haven't done so? yet. They said they were going to maybe close the accounts at the end of the month. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, does it, how many people have actually used the digitizing equipment successfully? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So it does still work as far as anybody knows? No, and as of last week. As of last week. Okay. Well, um, um, uh, so those of you who still want to use it and uh, uh, you, you, you know that, that you have six examples of, of success that people you could you could ask if you got into troubles, but I would hope that you do it uh, before it breaks down because software rot sets in everywhere. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, I think they installed a new memory on Coyote last weekend, and, and uh, it was a little bit flaky for a while. I'm not sure if it, you know, they improved it by adding more memory. And uh, and now it runs only half as fast as before, or something like that. <coughs> okay, so now problem three. Um, what are the how, what are the uh, what are the results? How how do people do? I, I'll report. I had 14. Um, I think, of course, nobody's checked my program. My program thinks it has 14. <laughs> what do uh, okay. Um, Anil, we haven't got a complete cover yet. You haven't got a complete cover. You have an incomplete. You have you have you have we it have down it. to six thousand sixty-five thousand five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we can't cover all the faults, and, and the, yeah. the ten the ten we're missing are probably the dominating cases. So. Okay, so you're missing ten faults, uh, and they're tough to get those ten. Yeah, that's what you're saying, and that's right. the team of Anil and. And Andy Golden. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so um, uh, don't feel embarrassed. It's okay. Pang. Our team is John Whitfield and uh, Dimitri. And uh, we haven't gotten a solution yet. How close are you? We have uh, covered all except two faults. And I mean, Another fault is undetectable. Yeah. In other words, you've got you've got uh, you've got two that you think you could detect probably, but you don't know for sure because you've never <laughs> detected it. Is that right? I mean, I might be. Uh, uh, know for sure that you can detect it. Oh, you do. Yeah. How? How do you know that? Uh, well, uh, we grind through the 64k possibilities. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, but you didn't you didn't take a note of which one it was. Well, uh, we, we didn't want to do it that way again, I guess. Uh, okay. Um, trying to find the, m some of my notes here while, while, while you're talking. Okay. So uh, uh, all but two in that case. How did you get the, the uh, uh, so, so you, well, let's, let's just, I want to first get the bottom line and then I'll go into the thing. Karen, what do you think? You're working with? Um, Marianne and Arif. And we have all but a whopping 18 of the little peckers. <laughs> <laughs> all but 18. Okay. Um, we've been one bug away from getting the whole lot. <laughs> for about three days. Okay. One more bug, huh? Okay. <laughs> but what a grand scheme it is. <laughs> okay. Do, 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 would you like to uh, describe the grand scheme anyway later on? Um, okay. Now, um, uh, 
Ah, uh, yes, here's my here's the thing. Okay, now let's see. What, uh, Dimitri, you've already, you, you're with John and um, Anne. And uh, Arif? Okay. It's covered, Andy's covered. Kathy? <laughs> I've been working with Roger and Mike, and we've got a solution with 13. Um, 13? Is that the best you could do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean you're missing 13? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you covered it with 13? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's uh, remarkable. I'd like to hear about. Um, but you, as you, you've paid your dues for the previous one, so I'll ask uh, Roger <laughs> Mack to, to divide up the, uh, uh, the description of, of how you got 13, okay? Marianne, you come, uh, Amy? I'm working with Rich. And he's out of town right now, but we've got down to about 15 at the moment. 15, uh, you're covering, not covering it with your, what? 15. Oh, 15 not yeah, covered? covered. Oh, I see. We ought to have a way to distinguish this by calling it minus 15 or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so, uh, uh, and let's see, um, you, John, you were mentioned, so you and I'm not mentioned, Andy Tucker. You and Andy? Yeah, and we haven't found a cover yet either. Okay, well, um, let me see. I'm, okay, well, I was wondering how many people would find a cover. Who would find one because uh, I I, can't, I don't have my my notes on it here. But what happened to me was similar, I suppose. I I tried. Uh, well, let's see. Let me let me find out. Uh, uh, Neil, how did you get the? How did you get up to ten? Um, tried. Well, the the cover that the partial cover that we have so far it was generated in a number of different ways. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the inputs were random. Some of them were entered by hand, um, and some of them were generated by program. Okay, so you got three classes of, of, of ways of, of, of wait. One is random. So what did you? So so you got a lot of them by random, or how did you? Uh, no, you not know. many of them are random. Mm -hmm. But there you, are just a few random ones that happen to detect faults that uh, the others hadn't detected. So. Okay, so 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 then the ones by uh, by uh, program were determined how? Um, by a non-exhaustive yeah. forcing scheme. Uh, so it would uh, it would give up. In other words, it, it would it would try if it, it would non-exhaustive means that it didn't try all possibilities, but it, it would, would it would it would it would try it would try uh, possibilities it thought were promising, and if they didn't work, it wouldn't. Go it wouldn't back, further. wouldn't back up. Mm -hmm. uh, that it, it would backtrack, but it, it wouldn't go. Be, it wouldn't try all the, the possibilities. So, uh, for a number of gates, it would just give up mm -hmm. and say, "I can't do this." Okay. And and uh, uh, how many gates did you cover that way? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, roughly know. most of them, or or do you just? Oh, oh, okay, and then you got some by hand. Then I had, yeah, then and, I had some by hand. And how did you decide decide to do it by hand? Well, I had uh, um, I just had a program that let me. They're they're essentially random, but I was using uh, some cues um, from other ones I'd got, and uh, it would let me enter them an input and see. If it determined any faults that the others hadn't determined yet, mm -hmm. and if so, I would keep it. So you got, but you got these guesses by by some previous run. What guesses? I mean, the, these these things. These you you enter in something by hand from a previous run or, or something. It wasn't that you that you looked at the multiplying circuit and said, uh, uh, boy, I bet you if I multiplied 68 times 700. And or what I guess it has to be less than six by two hundred. Well, that, that it would that it would produce this fault. No, actually, yeah. some of them I did say this is a multiplier circuit, mm -hmm. and I should maybe try this one. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember if those if those were the ones I ended up keeping. Yeah, okay. But I did use that mm -hmm. knowledge. Okay. Well, in my own uh, case, I it's uh, something like that. I mean, I had I had uh, I tried random. Uh, a random greedy approach, uh, which, as we talked about last time, um, first is to see how how it was, uh, uh, what the territory was like, 
and uh, found out that, um, uh, see, I don't have, I don't know if I have a printout of that. Yeah, here it would say, for example, hits for gate 775. All these gates are increased by a factor of three. 217 uh, times it was stuck at zero. Th 33 I detected stuck at, at one. And then there was this one. There were there were 10 gates, in fact, that in the first 500 random trials or 400 or something random trials, um, never never were stuck at one. Never were. Never got a one. On them. Ne never got a one on them. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was there was this one gate, uh, for example, had. Um, only two cases. Only two cases did I detect it stuck at zero, and only two cases stuck at one. So this this was a gate that that uh, seemed to be uh, probably equally likely between zero and one, but it was it wasn't very important in the output because usually its its faults wouldn't get through. So even though it was, you know, even though it's it it, it was probably fairly easy to set to zero or one, the other guys that 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 it needed in order to get to the was output. Was it close to all fifteen? What? To the 15th output? Highest. Ah, well, let me see what that was. Um, what did I say? 2, 2. That's 1054. It's very near the... Uh, it's very near the uh, 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 the end of the circuit, but I, I, I haven't got a good symbolic identification of these, which is a, which is a mistake. I should have... I should have added another field in my record that says, what, what gate is this? Uh, other than a numerical indication for so that I could understand, uh, but there I have another case where it was where where the thing never occurred, stuck at one or I mean never occurred with the value one and I detected it, but three times zero, and that was very that was very close to the to the final output, uh, so it probably was was used by you know as some it's probably. Uh, um, an AND gate or something where the other where the other thing is always canceling out this one unless it's ANDed with one something like that um, and so um, so I broke I too broke down, down and did an exhaustive uh, I tried all 65,000 uh, inputs and printed out every time one of those ten guys um, uh, was stuck at a gate. Was had a stuck at thing, and and that uh, I mean, you know, I knew that this wouldn't generalize to the next higher level case, but I was, I had no other, other. other I tried my backtracking method on it, and uh, and uh, it worked very very well for the ones near the beginning of the circuit. Um, it would, you know, instantaneously print the answer. Um, but when I got to these 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 uh, ten tough ones, and I tried it. Um, uh, I, I, it just went on and on forever. It's, it's uh, if you've ever done much backtracking, you, you you know the symptoms of the thing. There's you typically uh, going back and forth between three or four levels of a of a of, of a search tree, and um, uh, and uh, uh, you you uh, you suppose it'll eventually it'll eventually stop. Are you, I remember the first time this. When, once, when I was an undergraduate, I tried to, to program the machine to to find a solution to this solitaire game where you jump all the pegs together and try to get one left at the end. I see that it's now a problem in Abacus magazine that just came out a month or a week or so ago. Uh, uh, people are supposed to send in their solutions to this uh, to this thing, and I wonder if other people will discover. It. Well, like my my program. I wrote a nice general program that would work for arbitrary um, shaped boards, and I tested it out on a on a four by four uh, case, and I could jump it. No, it worked fine. So then I put in the whole the real board, which is I think um, nine by nine or or seven by seven, something like that, and um, and and let it run. And I and I stayed at the computing center, um, uh, and I and I. Kept, was waiting to get my answers, and finally at eight o'clock in the morning, I decided I'd better stop the machine and take a look at how far it got. And and my best estimate was that it would have been another 200 centuries before it would have uh, <laughs> at that rate. You know, it was it had it was still it, it, it you know there was a sort of a 48-step decision tree, and it hadn't reconsidered the 16th branch yet of, of its where it was going. It was backtracking. 
Well, um, and uh, what I found with this exhaustive search was uh, was that there were some gates that there was there was a, a one gate that had um, only two ways to get it to, to get it out equal to one. Does anybody know this? Does anybody find this same, same thing? And it was. Um, and the only two ways were to, were to multiply 199 times 247 equals 49153. And this also equals 247 times 199. And those were the only cases that, if, if my program is right, um, that, gave, that gave one of the gates. And then there were two, there were two others that had only four ways to... To, uh, uh, to to get it. Now, if you look at these in binary, this number is very close to three times two to the fourteen. Three times sixteen. It's very close to that. And then my other my other hard cases were um, 149 times 220 equals 32780. You can see close to 2 to the 15th here, 147 times 223 equals 32781. Um, and then the corresponding one with the factors reversed was another case. And, uh, and then, um, um, I guess there, there's just a few, a few tough examples. Well, 231 times 142 is 32802. This is all in decimal. In binary, the, the patterns are somewhat interesting too. But um, the main thing is that the binary pattern of the product is very, has lots of consecutive ones in it, or lots of consecutive zeros that, that require a, a ripple carry that uh, passed a lot of ones. 223, 147, 149. Well, oh, this, 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 this one was half of, the of that example, 16390. Okay, those are the, those are the, uh, the, the things that seem to be hard to multiply. I mean, that, that when you multiply them, give, give other outputs. And from this, I would suppose that if I go to uh, the next higher case, 16 by 16, um, I it would help to first factor numbers that are near 2 to the 31 and find out and try uh, try inputs like that and maybe if I were still stuck with this kind of a so this kind of an approach where, where, where my backtracking wasn't wasn't working um, however talking to the people who got 13 it looks like their method might might uh, was much better at backtracking and some it's a so they, they discovered the, some some secret way to to get through, um, or else I had a bug in my program. <laughs> um, in a, uh, uh, now, um, okay. So so you so you uh, uh, got so so anyway. The, the there were these ten left that that were missing. And Pang, you said four left or. Three, actually three, 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 three. two. I mean, we know yeah. one. Yeah, right. So the two that I imagine two of them are are probably yeah. in this list here, right? <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get the uh, to that step to that? Okay, step? we um, we tried the uh, four bit case and the five bit case, and we mm -hmm. solve it and get all the solutions. I mean, the, um, the for the four bit case, we have five pairs of inputs. Oh, well, let's yeah, let's ask that question. So you got maybe other people try that. So the four, four four by four multiplication, you could cover it with five. Yes. And the five by five is seven. And so that means. Uh, yeah. Well, this suggests a, is of thirteen. Eight by eight. Yeah, it suggests a formula like two n minus three, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a conjecture for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. What? It, yeah, and do you think these are the best? Uh, does anybody else try the small cases to, to, to compare? Do we have? 
Uh, I'm fairly sure the five is four by four is exact. Uh huh. We uh, on the on the uh, the one by one. on the one by one uh, <laughs> uh, we would expect that to be a, a fairly yeah. easy one. Uh, <laughs> tested on maybe negative one. Yeah. What? Negative, negative one. one. <laughs> well, um, no, I guess with that we would we would have a little trouble on the one by one. But uh, uh, what is it? It's a uh, it's a single end gate, and so uh, you would have to test it twice, wouldn't you? <laughs> One of the See whether it was stuck at the wrong value. Uh, okay. Now, uh, zero by zero. Uh -huh. I always, always like list going the other, both directions if you can. Okay. So anyway, this is uh, this is our best, and this is probably correct. Huh? Okay. And so now, can you use the four by four somehow? Yeah, we try to recognize patterns of something. Uh huh. And try to feed it in. Recognize patterns of uh, you mean uh, what the what these. Of the, Good ones the total number of the pairs that's, that were in the solution. So we had about about 70 uh, to pairs total or something like that for the 4x4 four four case. 70, 70 gates. 70 pairs of inputs. Pairs of inputs, yeah. yeah. That, that combinations of five of them would give a solution. Oh, okay. I see. 70 ways to take. Is that 70? Yeah, something like 70. 70 good. How did you? What are these 70 represent? We we generated all the solutions for the 4 by 4 games. Yeah, and the gates are. Oh, I see. This was an exhaustive search. It was an exhaustive. I mean, of all the of all the covers. And, and how many? Was a Klein McCluskey sort of thing. Yeah. So the. Uh, yeah. um, so now let's see. Uh, you've got uh, how many gates in that? 70 gates. 70 gates and seven. And so you you had. Uh, and also 70. Is that a coincidence? No, I don't think it was 70. It's some of the number, but I mean the number. And one of those gates couldn't be. Right. Two of those gates, in fact, can't be covered. In two that. of the gates in the 4x4 case are 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 always zero. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Somebody said the one was feeding into a nut. No, wait. They weren't that zero, but three that was three by three. Okay. So um, uh, maybe it's always prime. Fibonacci <laughs> <laughs> um, number minus one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It, this one moves that one. <laughs> okay. no, uh, oh, uh, I see. It's it's near a Fibonacci. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I think it's also near another show. Okay, so John, so you so you've got <laughs> seventy <laughs> seventy sets of five that will that will do it and, and you looked at those sets of five to see if there were if there was some you looked at them in binary or something and seen if you could generalize this to a to, okay. to something that would help with the uh, with the eight by eight. Mm -hmm. This uh, I, uh, intuitively, I, I, I would say this uh, this approach of looking for patterns would I would I wouldn't trust the patterns too much because I knew that the, this uh, this end around method that we had of going three to two three to two uh, doesn't mean that the four by four is a subset of the eight by eight. If we had a if we if we did it more recursively where we where we uh, kept the two trees separate and then combined them somehow at the last step, uh, um, the four by four would have. Would, would be a, a definite sort of a sub-module of the eight by eight, but it, it, it isn't there. Um, but it would still give uh, give insights into the kinds of. Uh, I mean, I think for a lot of the circuit is the final parallel ladder that uh, that combines the last two commands, and and those are that adder depends in a different way in the eight by eight case than it did in the four by four case on the on the on the input. Uh huh. So 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 that, so that was a, an exhaustive uh, covering search. That's interesting, because how long did that take? Was it? It was pretty fast for the four by four, like twenty minutes maybe. Mm -hmm. For the five by five, to, we didn't finish it. Mm -hmm. So you just this is the best uh, that we found so far. Yeah. Um, the uh, my my professor. Uh, Marshall Hall was my advisor, and he, he he was sort of famous for the remark that in the combinatorial problem, um, uh, if you if you uh, um, get another order of magnitude of computing resources, you only get to you only get to do one more case, 
of a combinatorial problem. I mean, at, at usually. Um, and uh, people were using that as an argument, saying, well, if you're only going to get one more case, then then uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, uh, worry about the fact that your memory is, is, uh, it, it isn't as big as you want, because even if you had one a lot bigger, you would only get one more case. And this seemed to satisfy a lot of people until you tried to use the rule backwards and say, okay, since you don't, since, you know, let's give you one tenth as much memory so you have only one less case. Um, uh, <laughs> and they didn't like that. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> all right. Now, all right. So, so that's the um, uh, so so the, 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 did those actually uh, help then in conjecturing good patterns for the for the uh, was it yeah. successful? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that successful? Yeah. And then Dimitri put in some more patterns. Dimitri has his secret patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Now, actually, we have a, a very fast simulator, so mm -hmm. we could uh, use a random patterns, mm -hmm. and we present the response very quickly. The simulator would tell you what all the all the um, what covers we had. All the all the all the all the cover all the gates you all the all the faults you had. Right. Mm -hmm. and so we went up to having six faults left. How did you do the fast simulator? In C. I mean. <laughs> that, is that the answer? I'm going to see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what a neat algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, was it substantially different from what we talked about in class last Thursday? Not really. It was. Yeah. It, it was? Yeah. Okay. Was doing, oh. doing the multiplication. And it was actually, what, doing? Doing the actual multiplication of a pair of numbers. Uh huh. 802 times. <coughs> Okay, so you so so it was going through uh, the circuit in in uh, with a lot of bits of uh, uh, using 32 bits at a time. I mean, somehow right, it, the simulator of the multiplication ran in parallel, mm -hmm. so it would do those four loops in your statement in parallel. In your mm -hmm. statement of the problem, and then we did that multiplication once each for each stack out full. The four loops would go in parallel, so you're Hmm. So, so you're doing lots of gates. That's that's interesting. How do you get the parallelism on the for loops? You you have thir thirty two bit. Right. Uh, well, you, you don't need that. You need the most sixteen bits in, in the eight bit multiplier. But yeah. So you do all those shifts and and XORs and so on in the circuit in parallel, rather than doing different stack out faults in parallel. Okay, so so you took the the formulas that we had for the for stuck at faults, and that gave you 802. Uh, well, that's what I don't I don't quite see the, the you've got six you've got parallelism in two possible directions, and I don't understand which is which. I mean, what, what I could imagine, for example, we 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 had sets in the on the on the board last time, you know, s sub n, where s sub n was uh, something for gate n. Right and and uh, s of n since it's a set you could represent it by a 102 bit vector, and then you could you could uh, you know our operations on s n were were essentially uh, uh, exclusive ors and 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 such like uh, based on um, uh, on values of uh, of the gates and the and the, and the other s's. We d we did the other direction of parallelism. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, so that's what I want to. Get on the ta on the table. What is the other direction of parallel? Which is that our, our circuit, our, our simulation of the circuit worked in parallel, so that perhaps there were a total of 30 ors, ands, and xors to do one multiplication. <coughs> How did you represent the sets then? The sets. The uh, the 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 the, 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 the faults. Uh, this the the set of. Okay, the faults were then. Represented, you could, so you could only test one fault for one multiplication. Okay. And so you just could. Oh, so, so this would say, does this multiplication uh, give you such and such a fault? Right. Uh huh. Okay. And that was done just by set, setting that particular gate to a bad value. Of oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then, and uh, very, and just a few operations to 
to, to uh, answer that question. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Now, uh, so if you had these other two gates covered, how many? How you I mean? You guys have all this software that covers solves covering problems. How many do you have? In in you know, uh, cases, do you have that cover the other all but those all but two? We haven't run. That. Haven't run that. Haven't got that yet. This kind of approach, I think, makes it even more sense when you have only a few gates which you are interested in whether they are covered or not. Yeah, right. Because that's uh, that's in fact, you know, in this this it might be this guy here, <laughs> or one of them. You know, this this one gate uh, uh, needed the uh, all the ones in this in this binary number. Uh, these were the only two ways to get it, and and I suppose by you know number theory there would be another case where where these numbers just wouldn't happen to occur I mean, uh, on another I mean on you know, a nine by nine problem or something there would be a case where there just weren't two suitable factors in the right in the right range but actually I think if, if one were only interested in a few cases of a few gates there might be a very simple method to compute it and that for those gates compute the expressions in terms of some gate values Essentially, it's mm -hmm. and then just plug in those gate, uh, gate values. In other words, do some symbolic ca calculation for the gates of, re of real yeah, interest. To that's you. A one one pass of that. That that would yeah, and the symbolic calculation uh, can always blow up because the number of min terms can be large, but still it might be small. It might it probably wouldn't. You know, it would. Be, it's at most sixty-five thousand. Uh, I mean, the, the to, to calculate a formula. Um, <laughs> It can actually, you know, it, whenever you get out of the textbook examples, the formulas get real large. No, I don't mean in terms of the inputs. Oh. I mean in terms of some actual gate values. Okay. Output values of certain gates. Given, yeah, I see. In terms of previous gates. In terms previous of and, 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 uh, and gates and after it too. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, once you ca once you calculate the gate values throughout, it might not be too difficult. To this. Uh, now let's see. Who are I? Are you with Karen? And yeah. yeah, this is just the neat method that no. No. Was that we were no. <laughs> well, what? Okay, well, I want, that was my next question about the neat method, <laughs> or whatever the right adjective was. Far too big a build up, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> are we on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's funny. We spent the first two weeks kind of in a theoretical vacuum, I think. We didn't see that the hard part of the problem would be covering a few very, very hard to find cases. And so we were trying to work up a scheme, um, sort of elaborate scheme to guide the choice of... Um, we, we kind of assumed that the set size for each of the faults, the set of inputs that tested it was about the same, but equal for all the faults, which of course isn't uh, uh -huh. um, And so we were trying to guide the choice of the inputs that would be in the cover based on that kind of assumption. Um, but in the process, we developed some tools that were helpful later. So it's really been only the past couple of days that we've been working on the actual yes. problem. Um, of trying to force the output at a certain gate to to be um, particular, a particular, particular value, value and propagate backwards. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't we weren't thinking really algebraically. I mean, it's interesting to me to hear people that you know were looking for. Yeah. Okay. I I, I do want to let because Mike's got a lot of things and Mike and Roger have a lot of things. So I, I so guess yeah. I should I I I want to try to. Or okay. Or yeah. yeah. We um. We tried to calculate the probability based on the assumption that the prob the probability of each input being zero or one was about equal. Mm. The probability of a value on any given line in the circuit. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and use that heuristic to guide the backward search. This oh, I see. The exhaustive search is sort of which branch to, to check out first. Mm -hmm. um, Tell them about the initial, uh, what we did initially. Uh, 
you are essentially trying to use some kind of greedy algorithm initially. So to select the first uh, pair of inputs, we decided that we don't want to go backward and forward because that seemed pretty complicated. So we said that we are going to select one input bit at, bit at a time mm -hmm. so as to get the maximum number out. Now for this, in order to set it to zero or one, you need a heuristic to tell you which one will get you more gates. So using these probabilities which we, I mean, you set a bit and assume the remaining bits which are yet not set are going to be zero or one with equal probability. Mm -hmm. Uh, calculate the probabilities and, of... And so, and so this way you try to get one set of inputs that covers that covers almost almost half of the uh, of the total gates. I mean, for example, you know that no no input will, will detect more than half of the stuck at faults because uh, it, it only sets a gate value to zero or one and so you get, at, at worst, the, the gate has been stuck at the wrong thing. So, so each input has a maximum of 401 uh, X's in its row. No, no, no. no. And, 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 but you were gonna you were gonna choose the bits of this input so that you would have some some row that had lots of x's in it. Yeah. Uh, so, something like that. Essentially, yeah. I'm, this is a, a heuristic estimate of uh, how many how many gates it will find. Mm -hmm. uh, based on yeah. a bit, uh, if you set a bit, and assuming the other bits are random, mm -hmm. uh, you have an estimate of how many gates you have, will have at zero. Uh, how many will? Yeah. Have now, are you one? estimating on all, on just total gates or on total? Um, remaining un ones. remaining ones, yeah, the remaining faults. I guess faults is the right word. So, so you try to, so, you, so, so you remember how many faults you've already covered, and then you, then you say now which bit would be a good one to try to, to, uh, to, to cover as, as many of the, of the uncovered ones. Yeah, yeah good idea. They were really yeah. good estimates initially, at least when the mm -hmm. number of remaining ones were fairly large. Mm -hmm. For instance, the first one, simply by setting a bit to zero or one, mm -hmm. it. Uh, with, with zero, it gave an estimate of 378 gates uh -huh. when uh, the number was 382. Uh -huh. I see. And the second one, I think it gave somewhere around the order of 300, uh, 209 when it was 213. Okay. So uh, what did I? Well, yeah. Let me. Let me. Uh, I got some numbers here uh, uh, that uh, in this in my 14th step solution, I said I first I had to do this exhaustive search and I I came up with these. With uh, with uh, three gates that were very hard to cover, one one only two ways to do it, and one and two of them only four ways to do it, and uh, I I exhaustively found uh, of all combinations of these guys which ones covered the most of these you know of these there was there was only six or six or so cases to try. Um, in fact, uh, one of the inputs covered two of the hard ones. Uh, 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 it was uh, one forty seven times two twenty three. This one covered two of the hard ones, <laughs> um, and so I probably wanted to use that anyway. That then, then I, um, and so I used those two as a, as my starting values, and then I started using the, a random a random approach, and and uh, and so the first one that I put in, uh, I had 455 gates uncovered. Then I put in the second one by hand, uh, and uh, that had 307 gates uncovered. Okay, well then I. Um, uh, I guess uh, I, I just use a random approach then for a while, uh, you know, try a 50 or something like that and take the one that covers the most of those. See, I didn't use as clever a method as you had. And I got up to till I was, I had 12, 12 inputs and four gates still uncovered. Now, at this point, um, I decided to look at these four that were, were uncovered and see what what combinations of values on the gates would be would be needed so that I could do two of these at a time, and so so then I could use my forward and backward searching method uh, to to you know I had I said this gate should be zero this gate should be one then I'll cover both of these faults and uh, those two and so that's how I got the the final two two uh, uh, in there um, but that that gave me only 14 which is not as good as 13 and so now I'd like to ask Mike and Roger how do you want to do do you want to explain how you did your how you did it? <laughs> well, um, in a lot of ways, the program wasn't anywhere near as clever as some of the other approaches which people seem to have tried. It doesn't um, rely on them, any knowledge about um, the fact that it's dealing with a multiplier circuit. It's just handling a general uh, network um, of inputs and outputs. And 
There's actually two steps to it. Um, one program runs and tries to find a sufficient cover, which will cover all the faults, and then another program takes the output from that program and tries to reduce it by... Okay, so that's... A, that. Did anybody else use uh, have something like that? So yes. just, yeah. So, so in other words, find, uh, find first a, a, uh, a small... Uh, in, uh, in a... A, a, a fairly small number of rows with 800, whatever it is, one columns, and and uh, and then uh, have another program that that finds the best cover out of this small small number of rows. And how, what was the small number of rows to, r roughly in your case? I mean, well, the sufficient cover. The sufficient cover to f was 20. When we turned out that you you would get 20. And but um, that. But then you would just find 13 out of those 20. Well, it, to get to get down to 13, um, we ran the program more than once with a couple of variations that so would get different outputs, and then I threw in by hand some like all zeros. You get different variations ones. because of bugs in the program. Or yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, we <laughs> just uh, <laughs> we just uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is called the phase of the moon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> At several points, the circuit has to be. Um, the first program has to make decisions about which way it's going to go in its search. Mm -hmm. And um, by we may adjusting the configuration of the circuit, you can, like it usually goes down the left side before the right side or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you just build an equivalent circuit with a different description, you get different outputs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, then I just... So that wasn't general in that sense, I suppose. I mean, or it was... Uh, or the program that generates the circuit... Generates a, a random circuit. ...is yeah. specific to the multiplier. I mean, we have... Yeah, yeah, but I meant this, the one that generates more variations of the circuit for this so that you can get different starting points. Was that also specific Actu to the multiplier? Actually, it was more, more of a case of, I mean, using... I mean, we, this was the, the time we had about two different versions of the search program running. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, cha we, we changed the we changed the program to um, when I mean deciding well which 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 path of search it was going to take we changed the criteria slightly and we mm -hmm. get a different set of tests and so every time every time we improved the program and got a different set of tests we just pumped that all into what we just dropped you had a file of file. sufficient cases that would right come and along. We eventually ended up with a file with about a hundred inputs in it okay and that got pruned down to around thirteen. And so then you look for at those hundred, which included, say, five, six, five, in other words, five groups of twenty, maybe, uh, each, of is, yeah. each of which is each of which is is sufficient to cover. And then you found that thirteen rows out of that hundred would actually do the yeah. would actually do it. In fact, the the greedy set cover wasn't good enough to get it down to thirteen. It could get it down to fourteen. By itself, <laughs> I see. Uh, and greed, so greed wasn't quite good enough. Yeah, well, and that's, uh, somebody, somebody up there will will be glad to know. Right. <laughs> There's a moral here. <laughs> uh, to get down to 13, I just required going in by hand and giving it some suggestions about which ones to try first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just it's just like using C. To yeah. You say okay, well we. Uh, so you 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 looked at it. You looked at this 100 by 800 matrix, and you no, said, "No, I, I looked at the, uh, I looked at the time it got 14, and um, um, I guessed that one of its early inputs was a wrong guess, and so I just took that out of the file and didn't let it have that as a choice." Okay, so it doesn't hurt to I interact with a program like this too. Uh, hey, we're we're not uh, uh, competing like in the crypto problem. We were competing against a, a, a human intelligence that had sent this uh, message, but the. Uh, but in this case, it's nature, or the very logical embodiment of nature, who has, who has decided w what the uh, stuck at faults are, uh, in, are in this covering problem. Yeah. Okay. So, so, th so that was the the last phase of it was to take this hundred and boil it down to thirteen, and that was a combination of of hand methods and uh, and and uh, has anybody verified independently that these thirteen really are correct? And, uh, no, actually. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I remember Mike came to and showed them to me uh, midnight, and uh, and the main thing I wanted to know is if he had one of these two guys in there because if he didn't, I would be pretty suspicious. But he did. So. Okay. Uh, in fact, I must have shown up in your hundred k you know, that you would have have these in all five. 
um, we, did, we didn't look at yeah. it very carefully. Yeah. Are we the, how, how did you generate your sufficient codes? No, that's yeah, the important so. thing. That's the way, that's the that's where the the real the real interest is. But I wanted to 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 get the end game out off the stack now, so that so now we have a, we have only one more sub problem remaining. How did you get the sufficient code? Um, well, <laughs> the you <UC>. see, yeah. <laughs> no, you use Pascal actually. Right? <laughs> <laughs> use Pascal, yeah. yeah. There, that was right. your problem. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> See, this for the wrong choice. We should have gone to Pascal. This was definitely a wrong choice. I wouldn't definitely see pretty quickly. What is that? Because of the running time? What? Because yeah. of running time? Running time and flakiness in the implementation of the list. Oh, oh this is on, on Neville? On yeah. Well, stack limitations and weird un undocumented compiler problems. <laughs> Features, features. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish all the, uh, or at least I wish half of the compiler writers of the world would have gone through the Stanford educational system. Then it wouldn't be so bad. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Pascal. I, uh, but I mean, Pascal doesn't work that well either. But then you have to. Just, you have to do more in your, on your own, and you keep a little more track of your bits, I guess, <laughs> or know what you're doing. I, I don't know. Okay, Mike. Uh, um, the we d we don't use any of the um, symbolic techniques. Basically, at any point in the solution, um, all we know about gates in the circuit is whether their output is zero, one, or unknown so far. And we pick a fault and try to. Um, try to find some specification of input values which will, some assignment of input values which will force that fault to be detected. Uh, how do you pick a, how do you find a fault, <coughs> as they say? The how do we decide which fault to, to force yeah. or how to force the fault? Well, you've got it, so, so you've, you've got a memory for each gate of what its current value is, zero, one, or, mm -hmm. or unknown. And also on each gate, there's a flag a for flag. each fault, for the two possible faults. Okay, so in this gate has previously is. been, we've previously covered this or, or right. not. Yeah, uh, that helps uh, to zero. Okay, so, you, so, so you've got some memory of, of uh, uh, it's a little bit like what you said, or, I mean, you've got, you, you were using a probabilistic uh, approach, but it's similar to that. You, 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 you say, uh, for example, here's a gate, uh, so far I've, uh, I've, I've been able to cover it stuck at zero, but not at one. That's right. And therefore, uh, uh, all other things being equal, I'd rather try f to make it equal to zero now, because so that I can detect the stuck at one fault uh, uh, with some with some uh, hope. Okay. So you choose a gate uh, at the initially. Your first gate that you tr tried was what, one of the outputs um, or one of the inputs? As it turned out, we, we started closer to the outputs and worked towards the inputs. That was, mm -hmm. we, we previously numbered the gates um, starting from the inputs so that um, the inputs of any gate had lower numbers than the gate itself. Okay. And then we just worked from high. And if you had any, any other numbering of that, then you would come up with a different uh, sufficient cover in that and generate other numbers. So, yeah. so with any circuit, you could have some way of shuffling these numbers Preserving that condition, and, mm -hmm. and you would get another starting kit. Yeah, okay. And um, then to the, the main the main routine in the program is one which tries to force the output of a given gate to a given value, and it just has a bunch of rules in it, um, which recursively, if you're at an input, then you're done. If you're at an end gate and you're trying to force it to one, then you force both inputs to one. These sorts of rules. Okay, so so we know that uh, that there's there's two forcing cases, an gate to one and a or gate to zero. But the, the other cases a lot um, more fun. <laughs> are an exclusive or as uh, at least in, in my program, I thought that I wanted to uh, if I wanted to force an exclusive or to be zero, then I wanted to force the two inputs to be equal. Uh, well, but you didn't do that. So oh, right. we forced them both to zero or both to one. Yeah, so you did. You branched. Yeah. Um, uh, and so this uh, this fancy uh, uh, 
equivalence class or union find algorithm stuff didn't appear in your program at all. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, so essentially, there were two ways of making the decision. I mean, the one was you look at the two gates that are underneath and you see which gates, which, right. um, like for instance, just take the case of the AND gate that we're trying to force to zero. Okay, force and, an AND gate to zero. Okay, and well, another thing that gets passed to this procedure that is forcing the AND gate is this, is this um, detecting parameter which says force the AND gate to zero and not only that, um, if, if this parameter say is true, then force it to zero and not only that, if there is some stuck at fault, then we're going to actually see it at the output. So that... Um, so it's supposed to go forward as well, well as backward? Well, well the idea is... Um, I mean, if you call it with, with this parameter being false, that means force it to zero, but we're not going to see it at the output. So anything, so, so don't worry about trying to find as many. Well, the idea, okay, say this say this parameter was true. Okay? Yeah. So, we're, so that what we see at the end gate is going to appear at the output. That is, if the end gate produces a different output because of some stuck at fault at the end gate or beneath it, then... It's going. It's going to appear at the output. So what we try to do is make it zero by making one of the inputs zero and one of the inputs one, rather than doing both of the inputs zero, because then the, the input that's zero will also be detected at the output. Um, Let's see. An AND gate in order to, for an AND gate to get, you can still make ones. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, the, the you, can't make, you can't make ones out of zeros only, but uh, still, there's other ones sitting around in a circle. Okay, so, so, but, but do you actually, does your procedure actually go forward as well as backward? You have, you have this one thing that's giving an end gate, and you're saying force something about its inputs. What about outputs? There there's, a, there's another procedure which says, given this end gate, make it visible to the, to the output. Mm -hmm. And that's a recursive call to the parent. Okay, so visible means... Visible means that if the output's other from what it's supposed to be, that's going to show up on an output, on an output of the multiplier. Well, another thing that gets, pa thing that gets passed to this procedure that is forcing the AND gate is this, is this um, detecting parameter which says force the AND gate to zero, and not only that, um, if, if this parameter say is true, then force it to zero, and not only that, if there is some stuck at fault, then we're going to actually see it at the output. So that... Um, so it's supposed to go forward as well, well as backward? Well, well the idea is, um, I mean, if you call it with, with this parameter being false, that means force it to zero, but we're not going to see it at the output. So anything, so, so don't worry about trying to find as many well, the idea, okay, say this, say this parameter was true. Okay? Yeah. So, we're, so that what we see at the AND gate is going to appear at the output. That is, if the AND gate produces a different output because of some stuck at fault at the AND gate or beneath it, then it's going, it's going to appear at the output. So what we try to do is make it zero by making one of the inputs zero and one of the inputs one, rather than doing both of the inputs zero, because then the input that zero will also be detected at the output. Um, Let's see, an AND gate in order to, for an AND gate to get, you can still make ones. Let's see. Okay, I, see. I mean, the, so the you, I can't make, you can't make ones out of zeros only, but uh, still, there's other ones sitting around in a circle. Okay, so, so but, but do you actually, does your procedure actually go? Forward as well as backward. You have you have this one thing that's giving an end gate, and you're saying force something about its inputs. What about outputs? Then? There's a, there's another procedure which says, given this end gate, make it visible to the to the output, mm -hmm. and that's a recursive call to the parent. Okay, so visible means visible means that if the output's other from what it's supposed to be, that's going to show up on an output on an output of the multiplier. So that is, you know, yeah, I know what it means, but how does the pro what does it mean to the program? How does the program there, enforce visibility? It, well, it's its assumption is that if there's a path of gates between this gate and the output, and each end gate along the path has the other input one, and each OR gate has the other input zero, then the gate is visible. It's and, not and guaranteed, it's, but it's 
it says so, so, so it, it's a heuristic but not uh, but not guaranteed so so you're saying that if there's a path from let's see you you say below where do you put your interest at the top of the top okay so here's a, here's an output ah. <laughs> And, and you've got some path here, and you've got an AND gate, um, and you've got some OR gates, and you've got some exclusive OR gates, that, and so on, we don't, that you don't care about. And, um, and then we've got this gate, gate G here, which you want to get a, which you want to make visible at this output, at some output. And um, you um, are say, saying that this on the OR was a zero, this on the AND was a, a one. one, and on the, on the other, the exclusive OR's, you don't know what it is. We forced to either zero or one, but we... But it's still visible. You, 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 you forced them to zero or one, why? Um, because we want to know what their output is going to be. Okay. The basic idea is right. that to make, to make G visible, you have to make, say, say there's that OR gate above it, you have to make the other input of the OR zero, and then you have to make that OR gate visible. And so it's, it's recursive mm -hmm. that way. So, um, uh, and, and uh, this is, is uh, the interesting thing about this is that it's not correct. That's right. Um, <laughs> but it's just a, it's what they call a heuristic uh, in, the, in, in one of the senses of the word that says it's, it's, it's mostly correct. That's right. There's several places actually in the program where we have heuristics like that. And the, the reason we don't worry about the fact they're not guaranteed is that once we've finally decided that, we, that we've found an input which will be useful, we then run it through another part of the program which does one of these parallel yeah. simulations of the so, circuit. So in other words, even though greed might not win, dishonesty seems to, <laughs> to, win. <laughs> uh, to be all right as long as you are. <laughs> <What? laughs> I, I'm, not, I, I'm not accusing Kathy of being a bad influence on this. <laughs> <laughs> you know well, actually, I wrote, the, I wrote the part that does the final yeah. checking. Just <laughs> just ah, just well, in fact, right. <laughs> sure, I see. This is, this, this is the same as darn in the previous one. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah, this doesn't work? What? Why this Ah, doesn't yes. Work? Somebody so wants to... When you have, we have reconversion effects, you can have... Um, it might be that G and G are, are both are both visible. For example, at this. But uh, if you try if yeah. you try first to force this path to be uh, visible to the output, then yeah. you will find eventually the inconsistency. So you have to backtrack. Anyway, it's only one path. No, no, no. no. The problem is that that it doesn't it doesn't catch everything, and also that uh, um, when you actually have the fault at that gate, it might change. So you say that, that it actually is supposed to give a, a wrong output up here. You you have you have only one you have one value of the of the circuit. You don't have you don't have the correct the true value and the and the bad value, do you? you just just you, one value. You just have one value. Supposed to be. What it's supposed to be, and so and so uh, uh, so so that's the test of visibility. Doesn't know doesn't also also keep track of. Uh, whether or not uh, it came through. So, so for example, if this was a, a, a simple case, we have G here and G here, and this is your output. Uh, so, so uh, 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 G is actually being used as both inputs to that to that gate. So they would think that the, that G is zero, for example, and they would set set this plus to a uh, to to a value like zero, or one, I mean, let's say, and then uh, then the output. Would, would be there, and they would think that that was visible. Um, we did something. Uh, uh -huh. Finally, we tried to to use your mechanical union find, and uh, we have uh, four additional gates with that. And our approach was that first we generate a path from the full gate to the output, a path, yes. a certain path, forcing those uh, ones the on end gates and zeros to the all gates, and uh, then try to work backwards and forwards, and if we find any consistency, then we backtrack and eventually choose another path. Until you get to, so, or else you find it's impossible. Yeah, that's a, that's a that, good, that that's a very good, uh, sort of, yeah. But there are four to the 19th paths or something like that. And oh, in the worst case. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, the branching points also are to the 19th. 
Yeah. Um, four to the 19th is a large well, number. The general idea here is yeah. just to get an input. Well, that, this is, a, yeah, I want to, by the way, I got to try to cover all the bases. But one of the things I, sh I, want, I wanted to mention is that this, in, uh, in, um, in general, uh, searching in, in AI, uh, there's this, uh, um, uh, this, this, the, the kind of forward and backward propagation of, of values that are go that are going on in, uh, in, in many of the programs described are is is a special case of the general idea of, of, um, of uh, I can't remember the right buzzwords. I'm sorry, but uh, but where you have more than two values, and so you have you know multiple valued things and and and, and other inputs, and the and uh, the, the the problem of detecting stuck at faults. Is is a special case of a general problem of hypothesis uh, uh, validation or something like this in in artificial intelligence, where they where you you try to say what for example you have some kind of a of a of a of a, of a model of a uh, um, uh, of a system that you think is 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 complete and you say well now uh, what what uh, uh, Case. Let, let me try to design an experiment that would that would maybe refute, refute this hypothesis. And if you look at the question of what would be the what would be one of the most ex effective experiments to try to see whether or not you know, whether or not uh, a scientific hypothesis is valid, um, uh, that turns out to be uh, um, uh, essentially the same as the problem of stuck at fault in in, in the zero one case. Um, and there's uh, Mike Genezzo showed me a paper where they applied this to this is this kind of a method to things like uh, uh, symbolic integration, I believe. Um, so anyway, the, the kinds of methods that we use on this particular problem um, will also will also uh, uh, make other problems simpler that that we're going to find that you'll find you know you, you 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 look for some other things someday and you'll say hey that's rather similar to the to something that we would do doing that sound that was that seem to only only relate to gates. Um, okay, now now they. So, the, uh, go ahead. Question. Yeah. Uh, having chosen <coughs> a gate, a, a fault, let's say, let's say found an input which will cover it. Some of your input bits may yet be unset, not set yet. That's right. So you would probably go and pick up one more fault and try to satisfy so, that. So How do you select that? So 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 coming back here and 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 he's making this one, he's got to call the procedure that. That, that forces that to be a one. Right. Fine. Uh, he's covered that's, it, let's say. Yeah. But there are still some input bits which are not set. So you can go ahead and cover another fault, maybe. That's right. So, so how do you select your next one? The same order, and we just keep uh, working through the gates in decreasing numerical order. So he finds the, first, the say, the largest gate that has yet not been covered. Basically, the gate closest to the output. And, and, and wait until all the inputs are uh, have a value, and, and, and then that becomes one of the, the uh, Things for your sufficient cover, and then you, and then you erase all the inputs and, and, and try to get again. Now, now it seems to me that one of the key things in this is that's making this work is well, we haven't focused on it yet. Is how you choose which uh, what what values to force on your on your inputs uh, if you're trying to force a zero and an AND gate or something like that. Uh, but the uh, uh, but it but he but uh, he, he's got the the thing that you are doing with your probabilistic method. That is, you have a memory of what. You've already covered, um, and that and that guides you in choosing the next case. Well, it's quite different from the method that that I that I used. Every time I attacked the circuit, I was just a tabula rasa. I was just starting over with uh, you know the same as before, uh, with with no with no knowledge of what I what was easy to cover otherwise, um, unless I had some some. Uh, Method I put in by hand, saying, "Here's the gate that I'd like to try now," um, and so so um, you've got a lot of memory of what uh, are potentially fruitful things or what are things that are still waiting to be explored that you haven't you haven't tried these you haven't ever covered these faults yet. So you've got that uh, um, as a guide to saying what's going to uh, um, what's going to help out. Is that right? So so let's look at that. Anyway, this is this. This was the, this picture of visibility is the one thing I th think we understand now that they have a, a heuristic for visibility that would say that um, that probably G will be visible but not for sure. There's a chance that it's that it will cancel through. Um, and then then uh, there's this final there's this uh, final test afterwards to uh, 
to to make sure that the that these heuristic assumptions were were in fact justified. Um, but it was but this heuristic has the has the advantages of, of a good heuristic. That is, it's uh, um, uh, it's usually true, and it it effectively narrows down the search uh, and, and, and has a fairly simple control because you have this parameter that's either true or false. If it's true, you go you go to the outputs and and try to get a visible path through, and that's a recursive situation where it tries to where there's one procedure that's called forcing. Uh, Force this value, force force this value to be b one or something like that. And so when you when you're forcing, let's see. You, suppose you you call a parameter true at g, so then it comes through this AND gate, and the AND gate wants to force this value to be one. What's the parameter on that call? It depends what the other input is. If the other input is a one, then that then the parameter will be true, because so, so, okay, say that AND AND gate there is both inputs one. Right. Then a stuck at fault that shows up on the right input to that will also go through to the output. Will also change oh, the I output. See. But if it's zero, then you don't care whether it's if, if it's zero, or... then it's going to be blocked, no matter what it is. Okay. But it really doesn't ma matter because you're going to have made this one visible anyway, and so you would. Yeah. I mean, the idea is to make the idea is to make G visible. Yeah. But, but, G, you, but G, this looks like if it's if it's if it's n steps from the bo bottom, you you would be checking for visibility several times. I mean, you would. Well, never mind. We've got a force output all the way up. Yeah. And okay. we just have these rules which try to pick up extra gates along the way if we can. Okay, so now you've got an output and that you want to force to zero. And the question is what, what to force it on its inputs. Right. For example, uh, uh, we just covered the first, we just covered 370 faults and now we're, and we've used up all our inputs, so now we're going to try the largest uh, fault that hasn't been covered. Right. And there's two, there's two sorts of rules. One is, um, since we're this gate, how are we doing on time? I want to. We got about five minutes. Oh, good. Any faults on this gate are going to be detected. Otherwise, we wouldn't be trying to force its output, presumably. Um, oh, that's not true. Okay. No, no. Assuming assuming that faults are going to be detected, then we can try to detect extra extra faults below this gate. Okay. So there's a couple of rules that work on that. And then the other. So, 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 if you if you go to one side, uh, on on the left hand side, you 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 have a choice of of trying to force zero on the left, uh, and not and not caring on the right, or you can force zero on the right and 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 do that first, or you could try to force zero on both, I guess. Or force zero one, or force one or zero. Force zero one, or force yeah. Right. And in fact, in the in the case where we're trying to, where we are detecting faults on that, or mm -hmm. we think we are yeah. anyway, and say the left input has not had a stuck at um, has not had a stuck at one fault detected on it, right. whereas the right one input has, right. then we want to try and not, detect that. Not yet. Okay. Stuck at one. So that's the one we force to zero, and then we force the right one, to, right input to one. And and this one is not yet. What did you say? Well, that one already. You know, anything about that one? Don't, what? Not, not making any assumptions about that. Not one. making any assumptions at all. On a one now, you, you would force a zero, but why would you force a one on that? Because if we have a one on the other one, then we'll detect a stuck at one on that left-hand gate. Ah, I see. It's the same rule as. Because it, in order to make it visible, you would yeah. want you would want to put a zero there. Okay. So then you would try this, and that's recursive. Both of these these methods would try. Okay. Uh, would would be called uh, uh, to force uh, to, uh, to force the zero. If that's an AND gate, it does the same thing again. Well, except that the one we set on the one on the left, we're setting the detecting parameter. Whereas on the one one on the right, we're not. The Don't one bother to go up on some on, on one branch and go, because you know that this one is this branch. Whatever is happens on the right branch is not going to be visible. It's not going to be visible, assuming the left branch is working yeah. correctly. Okay, so that that's a that's a cutoff that you you would have recognized. If you didn't have that parameter, you would have recognized it a little slower. That, that it wasn't visible. The other thing we do, and if there isn't any any sort of, I mean, if we, if we are dealing with a tabula rasa, in this sense, or some kind, where we don't have any any way of saying, well, this gate hasn't had this fault detected on it, mm -hmm. and this gate has. We don't have any of that to go by. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we do is we have the circuit building program rearrange the inputs to the gates. 
um, such that it's always nicer to force the left input to be a zero and the right input to be the, to be a one. Nicer. Nicer. Well, nicer here means we get into morality. And nicer everything. basically means that it will actually cause more constraints on the circuit, which means that if it's going to fail, in other it words, uh, you, you like to you you would like to. Uh, uh, you say it's nicer to set the left one to a two zero and, and the right one to a one. Right. In other words, if it's an AND, if, if the two inputs, one of them is, a, is an OR gate, you would like to put the OR gate on the left. And, 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 um, and if there's an AND gate, and an AND gate, you'd like the right. AND gates like to be at the right. So basically, the circuit building because program. The, because then you would have a, another uh, idea as to what would be, uh, that zero one would be a nice thing to try. I mean, if you're just given a choice between trying zero one and one zero, then All right. the, the, the search program will automatically assume you, you will try zero one you first. Would, you would like to try that first because it gives you more, more, uh, uh, less, more cases that you can go through without branching um, at the beginning. Okay, so that's another heuristic for uh, avoiding branching because because once you found this, once you've covered a fault, you don't have to. Uh, um, you don't have to consider the other branches that, uh, that that would have covered it in the hard case, and so so you might as well try to try to take cases that that have a forced forced case. Because if you're forcing an AND gate to be one, then you have no no, no decision at all to make. We also also do something similar on the make visible routine because you have a choice of which parent to go through, and so you can have the the circuit building port program just sort the parents in order of. What will we'll make the best? Um, I mean, the idea with make visible is to get to the top as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. And so, if you can go through an XOR gate, then go through an XOR gate. Um, if you, and then you I did some. I did studies on the circuit, by the way, to find out how hard it was to which were the the hard mm -hmm. gates to make visible. And uh, and it turned out that uh, uh, almost all of them were easy to make visible and in, uh, gosh I don't I don't have my my uh, outputs in there but it turned out that so, that some somehow um, all, all but yeah all but um, uh, a dozen or maybe 20 were uh, uh, had a had a had a path that was that was all and gates are all oh, oh, all and, oh no, let's see it had no um, I guess it, it had had none of these none of these cases where that where your your heuristic broke down. I guess is what is another way to say to say what I was doing. The coefficient the, when I in, in my uh, in my representation of g equals something f f plus h f could be factored into a product of of um, of uh, uh, inputs and and complements of inputs. There is an interesting quantification of what you are just saying in our program, where we where we maintain the probability of a, of an of a fault being at any gate being propagated out, mm -hmm. and in most cases the probability, regardless of the inputs, with the inputs being random, was over 0.95. Ah, yes, uh, I except see. in a few cases. For yeah. instance, in one case it was 0.005, oh. where there was only one output path. Uh -huh. Okay, but. Uh, okay. Some, that, except for five or six cases. Okay. The well, that, that vindicates your characterization of the of the method method here. Okay. Um, well, now, so the common so the combination of lots of uh, of lots of good ideas seem to have made this made for this uh, winning solution of thirteen and uh, and uh, so that makes three problems in a row in which I've been uh, uh, pleasantly surprised by the by the outcome. Although uh, I know. The, um, uh, others of you are wishing that that you'd been as lucky too, but uh, I still think that that the uh, methods that people have described have been have been uh, pretty pretty good and interesting, even the ones that didn't come up with the record. But I think maybe probably 13 will be the world record for this circuit. All right, so that's a that's it then for our our. Uh, class discussion of problem three. Thursday we will work we'll begin on problem four. We have four four class sessions on problem four while everyone is also working on problem five, we hope. All right. <laughs> okay.